You want to tell everybody good morning? Good morning, everybody. So good to Welcome. see you. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. Let's start by singing our morning songs. Let's get all warmed up. Maybe rub your fingers together. Maybe reach them all the way up in front of you. All the way back down to your knees. Just pack. All warmed up. You rub them together. Oh, yeah. You can get any instruments you'd like to use. You can use your hands as your instruments, your voice. You can do some pack, pack. All right. Let's get ready for our morning song. Ready? Oh, cool, Wilson. Good morning to the sun. Good morning, everyone. We practice every day to be kind so we have fun. Good morning to the world. So much to thank you for. The sky and all the trees and the swish of the breeze. time right now because we are in the in a shift in the seasonal cycle that we're going through and so it is officially it's spring right right now is a spring season we were in winter when it was chilly and cold and now we've shifted into spring and this week on May 1st was a fun celebration across the whole entire world we call it May Day and it's a time that um, the whole world loves to celebrate the seasonal shift. And so um, we wanted to talk about a little bit of things that are going on in the springtime. And you might know of some of these because I know a lot of you are doing gardens at your house. So I just wanted to show you some updates on some of our big plants that are growing bigger and bigger that are ready for our class garden. We have some tomato plants. We have some herbs, some cilantro here mm, growing. Delicious. Some parsley Ooh, in the front here. This is kind of fun. Does anybody have any guesses? Does anybody know what this is? It's called fennel. Can you mm. say fennel? Yeah, that's it tastes a fun. like licorice. It's a really yummy one. We have some bok choy growing. All of our plants are doing really well, and we have lots of plants that we already put in the garden at school. And I have a garden at my house. Miss Julia has a garden at her house. And I know a lot of you are growing things at your house too. We're excited to to show you some garden updates in the future. Um, so we thought we could sing our spring song, which is a song that you may have heard before and you may have not heard before. If you remember, um, let's see, if you remember the video that we shared for the first day of spring, that's when we sang it the first time. So maybe get your hands all warmed up again and think about lots of spring thoughts. Maybe think about birds chirping, maybe think about planting things, maybe think about some rain, and let's sing it together. Ready? <clears throat> shifts it's a cycle right so right now we are in spring and what comes after spring what comes next does anybody know can you say summer 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 is the next season after summer what's next fall or autumn can you say it'll be fall fall yay and then after fall what comes next I start wearing lots of jackets, 
maybe some warm hats. It'll be winter. Can you say winter? Winter. That's right. And then spring comes around again. And that's our seasonal cycle. So exciting. So Miss Julia has a very exciting book to share next. This book is called Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt. It's by Kate Messner. And the beautiful illustrations are by Christopher Silas Neal. Up in the garden, I stand and plan, my hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams. Spring sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots. I think you can all relate to mud sucking on your rain boots. You get kind of stuck sometimes. It's not quite time, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there, I ask? What are some things that are down in the dirt? I bet y'all have some ideas about that. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects digging and building and stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. That's definitely happening around here. It's been happening for many weeks now. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rustly armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. You all know a lot about composting. Down in the dirt, pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in pl plated suits of armor, roly-poly around. Have you guys been finding roly-polies in your yards at home? Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my finger and sprinkle seeds in a careful roll. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the dark. Down in the dirt, a tomato hornworm horn rests, waiting for wings, and the leaves will show lay her eggs. <clears throat> Up in the garden, carrot plants sprout. Pea blossoms bloom, wasps are on the prowl, and honeybees visit, legs loaded with pollen. That's the honeybees helping us with our garden work. They're our partners in our gardens. I weed and wilt in the sun so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp, dark. Have you been finding earthworms as well? Up in the garden, rain shower. Nana turns the hose on me. Yay! It's gonna be time to play in the hose pretty soon. I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and a long-legged spider still walks over the stems. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybug <clears throat> Ladybugs feast on aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. I cannot wait for summer and fresh tomatoes. I'm really looking forward to that. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious, too. Up in the garden, we pick cukes and zucchini, harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. That sounds like a very lovely way to spend an evening. Down in the dirt, 
skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig and gobble cutworms while I sleep. Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids, and I'm after grasshoppers, ready to swoosh. But, snap, someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on supper. Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Down in the dirt, an orb weaver spins her web. Strand by silken strand, she'll munch on moths tonight. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines and we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry and harvest. There's enough for the neighbors too. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Up in the garden, frost draws lace on leftover leaves where secret egg sacs hang, waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. When Grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long, ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time. Dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow, a whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. Did y'all enjoy that one? It's a good book. <laughs> Speaking of things being down in the dirt, we thought we would next show you um, our compost viewer and give you an update on what's going on with it. Check it out. So last time we looked at this, you could see what was in this one. Does anybody remember what was in the front one? Something you might eat almost every day. <laughs> I do. A banana. Do you see the banana anymore? It has decomposed and this one is just about ready to be added to the garden. It's really good compost. Now this one, you can see a little bit, but before you could see even more and now there's just a little bit left. Does anybody remember what was in that one? Yeah, some clementine peels, some orange peels that were in there, and those are breaking down next, aren't they? They look like they might be done very soon. And then this one looks even more broken down, but not as much as the other ones. Do you remember what that is? A napkin? Yep, it's a compostable napkin. So this one's taking a lot longer to break down, isn't it? It's interesting to see the difference in how quickly the banana broke down into compost. Next, the orange peels, and now the napkin's taking a very long time, isn't it? Yep, pretty cool. <clears throat> so something that we all really enjoy when we talk about dirt is something that we play in at school a lot and we have a song about it. Does anybody have any guesses of what song might be next? The mud song. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Are right, you ready? Get all ready. Get all warmed up. If you want to get up and do some dancing this time, I know Miss MK really loves to do some dancing. Are you ready for it? All right. Let's get ready. Mud, mud, mud is so fun. You mix dirt with water and you get mud, mud, mud. We love that one. That's great. So next, my friends, Miss Maddie has a story for you, and I hope you enjoy it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I have another book on the topic of the fact that it's spring. So it's called And Then It's Spring, and it's by Julie Fugliano, and the pictures are by Aaron E. Steed. Very 
first, you have brown. All around, you have brown. Then there are seeds. It's like our seed song, the little boy's planting a seed. And a wish for rain. And then it rains. And it's still brown, but a hopeful, very possible sort of brown. It's out planting more seeds in his garden. And is that a little green? No, it's just brown, sort of brown. Then it is a week. He's out there still working in. Is the dog being helpful? And you worry about those little seeds. Looking over his garden, hoping. And if maybe it was the birds. Or maybe it was the bears and all that stomping because bears can't read signs that say things like, please don't stomp here, there are seeds and they are trying. You think, did the birds eat the seeds or did the bears stomp too hard? And then it is one more week. And the brown, still brown, has a greenish hum that you can only hear if you put your ear to the ground and close your eyes. That reminds me of the book Miss Julia just read where we saw everything underground make and compost. And then it's one more week. And a sunny day, that sunny day that happens right after that rainy day. What do you think is going to happen? And you walk outside to check all that brown. Oh, <gasps> what happened? But the brown isn't around and now you have green. All around you have green. Have you guys noticed all the green coming out at home? The end. That was an excellent book, Miss Maddie. Thank you so much. I think because of celebrating spring during this circle time and just in general, let's sing our rain song next. And then Miss MK has something to share with you. You ready? All right, everybody get ready again. Get all your body all loose if you see. Get your hands all ready for some hat claps if you want. Let's see. Okay, you ready? Rain, rain, come again. Please water our garden. Fill up our rivers and our cups. Thank you very much. Louder. Rain, rain, come again. Please water our garden. Fill up our rivers and our cups. Thank you very much. Yay. Thank you to the rain for taking care mm -hmm. of this beautiful world that we live on. <laughs> All right, my friends, so I think Ms. MK has been working very hard on some interesting projects and she would like to share them with you. And there she is. Hello, boys and girls, I'm so happy to see you. What a lovely morning we had after all that rain last night. Um, our green grass is just gonna keep getting greener and greener. I was driving through the mountains today and it was just so luscious and so green and we're so thankful for the rain to make that happen. Well, I wanted to show y'all some things that I have been working on. A lot of you know that at school, um, 
I help y'all with your art projects. Um, and so while I've been at home, I've been doing a lot of projects of my own. And I'll give you a little showing. Let's see. So I have, I don't have a very big house or extra rooms. So my little setup is just in my den. But I've been making these bracelets that have these fun sayings on them. Sunshine, girl power, gypsy soul, explore. And I use these tiny little beads to create all those necklaces and bracelets. Um, and I know that y'all like to make things like that. So I thought that I'd give you some ideas of how you could do that at home. Um, I got this, which is just sold at Walmart, or you can do like regular clay as well. Um, if you have an oven to cook fun because it just dries on its own as you keep them separated. I did some balls here and I have a skewer. It's very sharp. You could use a toothpick, but it's not as big. So let's see. Let's make this ball into a bead. Do you know what the difference between a ball and a bead is? A bead has a hole in the middle of it because you have to be able to string it on something. And then I made a necklace using some wooden beads, some foam beads, and then the modeling clay. And I did this in what's called a pattern. So I did wood, white, a shape, or a, the foam, and then it kept going on like that. I also did, that modeling clay is really fun to play with. You can do all sorts of things. I made a little bowl out of it. So, and you can add jingle bells to your work or whatever you would like, whatever you have in your house. We've done, we've used um, pasta noodles at school to make jewelry with. So just have so much fun creating. Can't wait to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Yay! Super awesome. Thank you. Everybody tell Ms. MK, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Nice idea. <laughs> All right, so I have another book for us. This is called I Am a Bunny. Miss Julia and Miss Thea used to read this story when we were just little kids. It's true. We read a lot. <laughs> I am a bunny. My name is Nicholas. I live in a robin feeding its babies some um, worm. Yum, yum, yum. In the spring, I like to pick flowers. I think that this illustration looks a lot like the barn property, the hill mm -hmm. and all the daffodils growing. There's dogwood, flowering tree right there. Beautiful picture. I pick the butterflies. And the butterflies chase me. Has anybody seen any butterflies flying around? My dog Willow has been enjoying chasing them. In the summer, I like to lie in the sun and watch the birds. I see something on this page that we have growing in our class garden. Anybody take any guesses? Yeah, strawberries. When you come back to school, I think there'll be some ready to pick from the garden. <clears throat> and I like to watch the frogs in the pond. I also think that our tadpoles might be more like froglets or maybe even frogs when you come back to school. Pretty exciting. When it rains, I keep dry under a toadstool. Is that another name for a type of mushroom? Mm -hmm. I blow the dandelion seeds into the air. Everyone blow dandelion seeds. <sighs> yeah, some good practice. In the fall, I like to watch the leaves falling from the trees. So it's not summer anymore. Now it's fall. I watch the animals getting ready for the winter.
And when winter comes, I watch the snow falling from the sky. Then I curl up in my hollow tree and dream about spring because after winter comes spring, right? And now we're in spring and next is summer. Pretty cool. Thank you for sharing that book with me. I love that one. It's a good one. Richard so, Scarry is one of my favorite authors. So our last update for you is about a very special creature that we've been watching. Do you remember what it was? Our caterpillars. So our caterpillars have done something very special and are actually continuing to do it right now. I'm gonna be very gentle. What do you see? Oh my goodness. What have our caterpillars done? That's right. Can everyone say chrysalis? Chrysalis. Our butterfly, I mean our the caterpillars have formed their bodies into the chrysalides. Check it out. And actually on this side, you can see there's two more caterpillars that are going to put their bodies in the chrysalis so that they can go through their big change. Does everybody remember that word? What's the word? And on the life cycle of certain creatures, they go through a big change. Metamorphosis. Let's all practice. Metamorphosis. Miss Thea, what do you call more than one chrysalis? Chrysalides. Chrysalides. Sort of a fun word. So next, they are going to stay really still in their chrysalides, right? And they're going to go through that big metamorphosis change. It's a lot of energy that they're having to use to go through that change. And when that change is complete and they start emerging from their chrysalis, what will they be? Butterflies! Absolutely. Yeah, we are so excited to watch them go through that process. You can tell them, thanks for letting us observe you. Thank you. Good luck with your metamorphosis. Woohoo! All right, my friends, we're going to unmute everybody so that you can say hello if you'd like to. You can chit chat for a little while. I think we have about five more minutes, five or six more minutes on. <laughs> Now they can hear you. Hi. Hi, MJ. Missia. Missia. Hi. Hi, Missia. Hi. Missia. Hi. 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 Hi.